Like mm-hmm. if he said jump on a plane tomorrow, I'm like, okay, I'm going. Yeah. You know. So um I'm just used to I guess always having somebody there who wants to pay attention to me, wants to text me every day, good morning, good night, how are you doing, you mm-hmm. know, who like actually cares. If I don't get that type of attention, I start to feel weird, I start to feel triggered, especially when I'm being flooded all day by fans telling me how amazing I am. It's it's like I love that and I'm grateful for that, but then sometimes I feel like something's wrong with me, like why is that not enough for yeah. me? Like why is it that I'm allowed to be the busy one, but then if somebody else is too busy for me, I like freak out? Yeah. And then that's when I self-sabotage. Yeah. And then especially if they start to give me a hard time about my career, then that I definitely start to like push them away. And yeah. Then, yeah. Well, it sounds like you're aware of so. the issues and that's the first step, right? Is to like yeah. being aware of it and then just figuring out how to like, mm-hmm. like you know, you said, manage, find the balance. Yeah, yeah. And also like manage your, you know, like I think one of the things that I, I love how this turned into a dating show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like one of the things that I had to learn that I think has been super helpful for me in my marriage is managing expectations. I truly believe that managing expectations is like the key to happiness. Mm-hmm. And I think that a lot of times we have unreasonable expectations that we put on people yeah. because there's something inside of us that needs needs like some void that we need to fill. Mm -hmm. Um, And so once I, and when I say managing expectations, I don't mean that like my husband doesn't like meet expectation. You know what I mean? Like it it sounds almost like, yeah, well, he's all right. And I'm okay with that, but it's not, it's not that. (laughs) It's just like everybody's got certain things that is really great about them and other things that maybe doesn't fulfill that that need that you need or something like that, if that makes sense. Like people are not perfect is what I'm saying. Right. And I think that the problem with a lot of monogamous relationships, and I am monogamous and that's what works for me. I'm is, monogamous also. Yeah. If you find that hard to believe, but yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and some people are, are, I know a lot of polyamorous people, and, and it's always interesting for me to talk to them because I feel like maybe this issue doesn't come up for them as much as it does for some of us people who are in monogamous relationships. But like we expect our partner to like fulfill all of these things that we need, like our physical needs, our emotional needs, like our security needs, Mm. um, our entertainment needs, like whatever. Right. Mm. And like one person generally cannot hit all of those marks. And so I think once we get to a place where we realize that we need other people in our life that maybe help us fulfill certain things that we can't necessarily get all of that from our partner. You know, it's like this Disney princess idea that we grew up with. Like, we're going to find this man. He's going to be perfect in every single way. And he's always going to be the same. And he's never going to like deviate from like, you know, this like being, you know, this, this certain kind of guy. And I think that's an unreasonable thing to ask for people. And so I think like if we can recognize that, you know, relationships have their ebb and flow and people have their ebbs and flows and, you know, like decide what's important to you, right? And what's not important to you. And like, yeah, yeah, it's really hard for me because if we you were talking about like security needs too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think because I'm a child of divorce and I saw a lot of what my mom went through, that I have major like security needs. Yeah. Um, Did your mom struggle being a single mom? You know, she works all the time. And I was an only child till I was 10. So my dad didn't remarry until I was 10. But um, and then my mom never she, my mom didn't remarry till I was 15. So it's like there's all these years where she was just, you know, never home. And then she also like started drinking a lot. So did my dad when they got divorced. So if she wasn't working, she was partying. And I just I felt like I was developing a lot of resentments like towards my dad and even my mom, you know, like I just felt like I don't want to struggle. Like I'm Mm -hmm. not going to be with a man who's just going to leave me with Mm -hmm. a kid and fill my head with like all this fantasy. Like, so even though I went through that, like my mom did teach me a lot about like independence and hard work. And I feel like if I'm busting my ass and like sacrificing a lot, especially the sacrifices that I make being on the internet and, you know, um, I need somebody who's going to be strong enough to be able to hold their own. If there's any traditional values that I believe in, it is where the woman or wife is the nurturer and the man, the husband is the provider. And I don't 
need you to rub it in my face of how much I make or how much income I bring because I need you to step up and provide for the family because then it's like, like, okay, I'm going to, like a lot of the times like we get left with that role to take care of the child and I feel like a lot of the times people don't give us as much credit for that, mm -hmm. you know, um, because that is a full-time job in mm -hmm. itself. So <laughs> it's like to have to add on like, yes, take care of the household and work and it's like, oh, okay, and then the man just works. Like, um, I'm okay, then I need you to help with all these expenses that we have because we're trying to build a family because one day I want that. And so the beginning of my relationships, like I kind of feel people out and see like how they treat me. And it, it's frustrating because sometimes I think that they confuse that with um, thinking that I'm being superficial or materialistic, especially if they know that I've had like sugar daddies in the past, which that's not the case at all. I just need to know that you can stand your own and be independent and not have to rely on me for everything and not manipulate me thinking that I'm relying on you for everything yeah. when I'm still working yeah. and still willing to like bear children and yeah. still willing to like keep a household together and then manage all the shit that you don't want to manage that's at home right yeah. it's like cleaning and cooking or whatever it may be um so it's hard to find both with that and also fulfilling those physical needs because a lot of the times when i date people in serious relationships i don't really go based off like physical attraction mm. if anything that kind of triggers me a little bit where i feel like I can't trust you, you know? You never want to be the um, the <laughs> the ugly one in the relationship. No, wait. Well, no, you no, always, sorry. You I, always want to be the better looking one in the relationship. Yeah. No, I never want to <laughs> date a man prettier than me. Oh, same. Sorry, I agree. Babe. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. No, I actually like, I'm totally with you and. Yeah, I feel like I thank God he doesn't watch this podcast.